Chapter One of the History of Miss Betsy Thoughtless, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joyce Martin. The History of Miss Betsy Thoughtless by Eliza Haywood. Chapter One gives the reader room to guess at what is to ensue, though ten to one but he finds himself deceived. It was always my opinion that fewer women were undone by love than vanity, and that those mistakes the sex are sometimes guilty of proceed for the most part rather from inadvertency than a vicious inclination. The ladies, however, I am sorry to observe, are apt to make too little allowances to each other on this force, and seem better pleased with occasion to condemn than to excuse, and it is not above one, in a greater number than I, will presume to mention, who, while he passes the severest censure on the conduct of her friend, will be at the trouble of taking a retrospect on her own. There are some who would behold, with indignation and contempt, those errors in others, which unhappily they are every day falling into themselves. And, as the want of due consideration occasions the guilt, so the want of due consideration also occasions the scandal, and there would be much less room either for the one or the other, were some part of that time which is wasted at the toilet in consulting what dresses most becoming to the face employed in examining the heart, and what actions are most becoming of the character. Betsy Thoughtless was the only daughter of a gentleman of good family and fortune in L, we shall leave the name out, where he constantly resided, scarce ever going to London, and contented himself with such diversions as the country afforded. On the death of his wife he sent his little favorite, then about ten years old, to a boarding-school, the governess of which had the reputation of a woman of great good sense, fine breeding, and every way qualified for the well-forming of the minds of those young persons who were entrusted to her care. The old gentleman was so well pleased with having placed his daughter, where she was so likely to improve in all the accomplishments befitting her sex, that he never suffered her to come home, even at breaking up times, when most of the other young ladies did so. But as the school was not above seven or eight miles from his seat, he seldom failed calling to see her once or twice a week. Miss Betsy, who had a great deal of good nature, and somewhat extremely engaging in her manner of behavior, soon gained the affection not only of the governess but of all the young ladies. But as girls, as well as women, have their particular favorites to whom they may communicate their little secrets, there was one who, above all the others, was distinguished by her. Miss Forward, for so she was called, was also very fond of Miss Betsy. This intimacy, beginning but in trivial things, and such as suited their age, continued as they advanced nearer to maturity. Miss Forward, however, had two years the advantage of her friend, yet did not disdain to make her the confidant of a kind of amorous intrigue she had entered into with a young lad called master sparkish the son of a neighboring gentleman he had fallen in love with her at church and had taken all opportunities to convince her of his passion she proud of being looked upon as a woman encouraged it frequent letters passed between them for she never failed to answer those she received from him both which were shown to miss betsy and this gave her an early light into the art and mystery of courtship and consequently a relish for admiration. The young lover, calling his mistress angel and goddess, made her long to be in her teens that she might have the same thing said to her. This correspondence being by some accident discovered, the governess found it behooved her to keep a strict eye upon Miss Forward. All the servants were examined concerning the conveying of any letters, either to or from her, but none of them knew anything of the matter. It was a secret to all but Miss Betsy, who kept it inviolably. It is fit, however, the reader should not remain in ignorance. Master Sparkish had read the story of Pyramus and Thisbe. He told his mistress of it, and, in imitation of those lovers of antiquity, 
stuck his letters into a little crevice he found in the garden wall, whence she pulled them out every day, and returned her answers by the same friendly breach, which he very gallantly told her in one of his epistles, had been made by the god of love himself in order to favor his suit so that all the governess's circumspection could not hinder this amour from going on without interruption and could they have contented themselves with barely writing to each other they might probably have done so till they both had been weary and although i will not pretend to say that either of them had anything in their inclinations that was not perfectly consistent with innocence yet it is certain that both languished for a nearer conversation which the fertile brain of Miss Forward at last brought about. She pretended one Sunday in the afternoon to have so violent a pain in her head that she could not go to church. Miss Betsy begged leave to stay and keep her company, and told the governess she would read a sermon, or some other good work to her. The good old woman, little suspecting the plot concerted between them, readily consented nobody being left in the house but themselves and one maid-servant young sparkish who had previous notice at what hour to come was let in at the garden door the key being always in it miss betsy left the lovers in an arbour and went into the kitchen telling the maid she had read miss forward to sleep and hoped she would be better when she waked she amused the wretch with one little chat or another till she thought divine service was near over, then returned into the garden to give her friends warning it was time to separate. They had, after this, many private interviews, through the contrivance and assistance of Miss Betsy, who, quite charmed at being made the confidant of a person older than herself, set all her wits to work to render herself worthy of the trust reposed in her sometimes she made pretenses of going to the milliner the mantua maker or to buy something in town and begged leave that miss forward should accompany her saying she wanted her choice in what she was to purchase sparkish was always made acquainted when they were to go out and never failed to give them a meeting miss forward had a great deal of the coquette in her nature she knew how to play at fast and loose with her lover and young as she was took a pride in mingling pain with the pleasure she bestowed miss betsy was a witness of all the airs the other gave herself on this occasion and the artifices she made use of in order to secure the countenance of his addresses so that thus early initiated into the mystery of courtship it is not to be wondered at that when she came to the practice she was so little at a loss this intercourse, however, lasted but a small time. Their meetings were too frequent and too little circumspection used in them not to be liable to discovery. The governess was informed that, in spite of all her care, the young folks had been too cunning for her, on which she went to the father of Sparkish, acquainted him with what she knew of the affair, and entreated he would lay his commands on his son to refrain all conversation with any of the ladies under their tuition. The old gentleman flew into a violent passion on hearing his son had already begun to think of love. He called for him, and after having rated his youthful folly in the severest manner, charged him to relate the whole truth of what had passed between him and the young lady mentioned by the governess. The poor lad was terrified beyond measure at his father's anger, and confessed every particular of his meetings with Miss Forward and her companion and thus Miss Betsy's share of the contrivance was brought to light, and drew on her a reprimand equally severe with that Miss Forward had received. The careful governess would not entirely depend on the assurance the father of Sparkish had given her, and resolved to trust neither of the ladies out of her sight while that young gentleman remained so near them, which she knew would be but a short time, he having finished his school learning, and was soon to go to the university to prevent also any future stratagems being laid between miss betsy and miss forward she took care to keep them from ever being alone together which was a very great mortification to them but a sudden turn soon after happened in the affairs of miss betsy which put all i have been relating entirely out of her head End of chapter one reading by joyce martin